There have been more deaths linked to COVID-19 in Latin America than anywhere else in the world. And worst affected is Brazil. There, around 600,000 people have died. President Jair Bolsonaro has faced intense criticism for his contradictory messages about masks, vaccines and precautionary measures. But more and more Brazilians are getting vaccinated. Some 70% have received at least one shot and almost everyone else is planning to do so, as the Delta variant rapidly gains ground. Welcome to the COVID-19 special. I'm Rebecca Ritters. Well, Brazil is still seeing more than 10,000 new cases a day, but that's a big improvement on earlier this year, largely because of the rate at which it's vaccinating. People there have been racing to get the jabs, despite mixed messaging from their president. The country's biggest city, Sao Paulo, is leading that race with more than 85% of its population already vaccinated. Brazil's megacity, Sao Paulo, is outdoing the rest of the country when it comes to coronavirus vaccinations. 99% of adults here have received at least one shot. Of course I think people should get vaccinated, and that means everyone. Many Brazilians are afraid of the virus and get vaccinated so as to not be so contagious. Vaccine skepticism seems rare here. The city is now rolling out jabs to young people with pre-existing conditions, like this woman's son. It makes me emotional to know that my son is now vaccinated. I had corona myself and was worried that I could pass it on to him. Now I'm relieved, also because he's about to go back to school. On the streets of the city, the number of people sleeping rough has risen sharply. The pandemic has thrown many back into poverty. But here too, most people have been vaccinated often with the one-shot Johnson & Johnson jab. Brazilians believe in vaccines. After all, we've been getting vaccinated against tropical diseases for a long time. We like it. The success of this mega metropolis in rolling out first shots has been partly put down to it making effective use of leftover vaccines. But second doses have been held up. Brazil is still waiting on vaccine deliveries. Well, for more, I'm joined by Dr. Natalia Pasternak. She's a Brazilian microbiologist currently in New York. Dr. Pasternak, thanks very much for joining us. And now before we get on to vaccines, I wanted to ask from you, Brazil has been one of the hardest hit countries by COVID-19, as we just heard. At its height, seeing more than 20,000 deaths a week. What's the situation there at the moment? It's slowly improving, and thank you for having me on the show. So uh, we uh, we have much less count of deaths right now and cases. So it's slowly improving. Cases are decreasing, deaths are decreasing, but still uh, we shouldn't be too optimistic about it because we have the Delta variant coming, mm -hmm. and we still have the Gamma variant around. They're both very contagious, and Brazil is finally picking up pace on vaccination, but still on first dose basis. Mm. So I think there's a lot of room for optimism, but cautiously. Now, which groups in Brazil are most vulnerable to the virus? Uh, the, the, the usual vulnerable groups, so the elderly, uh, immunocompromised people, but Brazil has a lot of social differences that has to be taken into account. So we have a lot of very vulnerable population that are very poor. They are being vaccinated in some states, but they are usually the most vulnerable ones anywhere in the world, and Brazil is no different. How many of the country's more than half a million deaths do you think could have been prevented with different management policies? Actually, it has been measured and published by a colleague of mine, Dr. Pedro Halau, from the south of Brazil, and he published a paper on Lancet uh, estimating that at least 
three-fourths of Brazilian deaths could have been prevented with the implementation of preventive measures and mask wearing. That's an alarming figure. Um, now, when it comes to vaccinations, though, uh, the president has been criticised of confusing messaging, poor leadership on that issue as well. Yet still, we're seeing a high number, more than 72% of Brazilians getting their first shot, nearly 50% fully vaccinated. Uh, how has the vaccination program been so successful despite that lack of unity in the messaging? Yeah, we are lucky in Brazil that we have had the most um, prestigious immunization program, one of the most prestigious immunization programs in the world for the past decade. So Brazilian population is used to getting vaccination and sees vaccination as a right and not as a duty and not something that they have to do or being forced to do. So they are very favorable to vaccination, always have been. And this is a credit to our immunization program, not to the present government. <laughs> So a, a very strong vaccination program. I, I was reading about that in the preparation for this interview. But what I also was seeing, were there were a lot of shortages, um, probably, um, but now that we're, all, we're actually even seeing that you guys are offering booster shots, does Brazil have enough shots to, now to vaccinate everybody? That's quite a controversy over here. So booster shots are being offered to the elderly population and to the immunocompromised only in most of the states. Uh, since Bolsonaro really wrecked our so uh, the, the, the immunization program that we were so proud of, states and cities are now left to their own devices to, uh, to, to try to solve how they're going to vaccinate the population. So they're mostly on their own now. And so some states are giving booster shots, the other states are not, but usually it's just for the elderly, the elderly and immunocompromised, which are a small part of the population. So, but, but vaccine shortage has been a problem here from the start. And this is a fault of the federal government again. The federal government hasn't really purchased vaccines in time so that we get delivery to vaccinate the whole population. And although the older population is very favorable to vaccines, we just don't have enough. All right, Dr. Natalie Pasternak, thank you very much for that. Thank you. Well, turning to some sad news from North Macedonia now, where at least 14 people have died and many others were injured after a fire broke out at a coronavirus hospital in the western town of Tetovo. The temporary hospital was set up to treat COVID-19 patients. Coronavirus cases and deaths in North Macedonia, Macedonia have been rising since around mid-August. It's unclear what caused the blaze, but an investigation is ongoing. Well, and now we come to the part of the show dedicated to your questions. Here's our correspondent, Derek Williams, to answer them. I have a breakthrough infection. How long will I remain infectious to others? Lots of the questions that people have been sending in and posting lately involve breakthrough infections. And that's no surprise. Um, I worry about them too. And what we know about them is changing all the time. Um, I think a big part of the problem is that the amazing efficacy numbers from trials for some vaccines led most of us to have unrealistic expectations. Um, even so, the vaccines are still very clearly preventing disease and severe illness in a whole lot of people. Um, data from a recent study out of Los Angeles that's featured on the CDC website in the US, for instance, it showed unvaccinated people were five times more likely to be infected than vaccinated ones and 29 times more likely to end up in the hospital. So breakthrough infections are generally a lot more rare and less severe than infections in unvaccinated people, even though various studies have shown that breakthrough cases can also carry high loads of the virus. Um, at least for a while. Despite that, many experts believe that breakthrough patients are likely less infectious for less long. But if you test positive after vaccination 
uh, you should still follow the same protocols as anyone else. In most places, that means uh, informing the people you might have exposed and isolating for, for 10 days, even if you have few or no symptoms. And finally, North Korea has been celebrating its National Day 73 years after it was founded. Uh, as usual, there's been a huge military parade in front of leader Kim Jong-un in the capital Pyongyang. What's different this year is a large platoon wearing protective suits. While there was no sign of masks or social distancing at the event, the protective gear is being seen as a sign that North Korea wants to show it's prepared to deal with the pandemic. The reclusive country has so far not confirmed any COVID-19 cases, but medical experts are skeptical. Well, that's our show for today. If you'd like more on any of our stories, you'll find that and much more on our website, dw.com forward slash COVID-19. There you can find previous episodes of our COVID-19 special and our other coverage of the pandemic. We'll be back again at the same time tomorrow. Hope to see you then. Thanks for watching.